9th or 10th. I mean, at worst, worst, I would say. Be, oh! Oh, is that Dean Wilson? Twenty twenty two has been full of carnage for the riders of all three fields, and St. Louis was no different, including a red flag and multiple rides back to the pits on the Alpine Stars Medical Mule. A little first hand update on Cameron McAdoo. You may have noticed the title contender missing from the night show, and that was due to a press day crash. No footage of the crash itself, but I do have a first hand testimony as I happened to be standing in front of the Pro Circuit trailer when he returned from the track early. He was visibly fired up, shouting expletives as he walked shirtless into the rig while holding his wrist his left shoulder looked a lot like this photo which leads experts to believe it is a separated shoulder later he got into the passenger side of an suv with his shirt half on visibly upset but again did not appear to be in major pain this year we've already seen adam steen's rollo race through a similar injury so it is likely that he could return before the end of the season but with the title out of hand an outdoor return could be more likely in the first 450 main event, Dean Wilson had a nasty slam into the finish line pillar after getting out of sorts in the whoop section. The Alpine Stars medical team tended to the Rockstar Husqvarna rider trackside for a very long time, but on Monday morning, Dean posted an update on his injury from his hospital bed. So guys, well, not the report I want to be making. Um, so first race of the night for me, second lap, I went through the whoops. My rear wheel just hit like an edge. It just shot me left. I like hit this little wall thing. Kind of had to like <clears throat> eject from the bike. I'm laying there, I hit pretty hard. And then I just feel like really, really, really warm. And then I look down, I'm just laying in a pool of blood. There's just blood everywhere. The, the Alpine Star crew did a good job. They came on the track. They, they bandaged me up as best as they could, but there was just blood leaking like insane. <laughs> And of course it was on my ass cheek too. So I think what had happened was it was going towards the wall. I ejected from the bike and my ass just went right into the uh, foot peg. So I got a laceration that's about 10 inches deep. It was really, really, it was about that deep. The doctor said she could put her whole hand and have got five doctors playing with my butt. <laughs> Can't say I've ever had that before. I went for two operations that night, and then I have another operation tomorrow. Kind of a weird injury, never had it before. <laughs> I pretty much made myself a third butthole. <laughs> a third? A second, a second <laughs> butthole. Very uncomfortable, throbbing. I've been laying on my side like this for the past 36 hours, it's, it's been miserable. Hopefully uh, there's some light at the end of the tunnel here. Uh, we have a good surgery tomorrow and then uh, hopefully we can be out by the end of the week. Just wanted to update you guys. Thanks all for supporting. Peace. In the second 250 race, the riders were halted with a red flag after an early crash left Kyle Peter stranded on the track right in a dangerous location. In the pits, I heard early whispers of a broken neck and the Phoenix Honda team confirmed this with a statement on Sunday night saying, rough night in St. Louis. Kyle had a gnarly get off in main two and suffered a broken C5 and C6. He is out of surgery and everything went well. Prayers and a speedy recovery for our guy. And easily the most scary crash of the night went to Club MX Yamaha's Alex Martin. The 450 class rookie was ejected from his bike at the end of the longest rhythm section and somehow found his limp body directly under the bike of SGB Honda's Alex Ray. I was able to catch up with Amart briefly in the pits after the race and he gave me a quick update on his condition. Crashed really hard, hit, you know, hit my head. But I mean, all things considered, you know, after a few minutes, I, everything was like clear. I remember everything the whole day. The whole main, remember the track layout, where am I at, what day it is. So, um, yeah, take it, take it easy a couple days this week, and if I have to do any protocols, I guess we'll see. But I mean, all in all, I think I got pretty lucky considering, you know, because it was a pretty big hit, big crash. So, just yeah, it sucks because I was had a good battle with Hart Raff, ninth and tenth there, just riding really good all day, and especially in that main. That would be my first top ten, 450 top ten, so it sucks. Awesome. Kind of some bittersweet. Moments later, I also caught up with the irreverent Alex Ray, who recounted his experience of the incident in the second 450 main. You're a lifeless, troll body. It's like, it was like a, someone threw a bulldog at me. 
he's like this, like he's little, but he's thick. And it was the gnarliest thing ever. It was dead weight. And he was stuck underneath my bike. And then I was like, it was not ideal. It was very scary. I tried to get my bike off him as quick as I could. He was lifeless at that point, but luckily he's okay. I talked to him after the day, so it's all good. No further news on Cooper Webb other than being able to confirm that he did indeed crash during the week. With many speculating that he could be dissatisfied with the new bike, it's nice to lay that rumor to rest and that it is indeed an injury and many of the people I talked with seem to think it will keep him out for the rest of the series, but no official confirmation from the team or Cooper on that one. I will have a quick video up soon where riders told me if they like the Triple Crown rounds or not, but before I tell you their side, I ask you to tell me yours. As a fan, do you like the plethora of racing moments that the format brings, or do you prefer the gradual buildup and the stakes that the traditional format has? Let me know in the comments, and don't forget to hit the like button, and be sure to subscribe to Rotomoto for more breaking news and analysis like this. The number one way to help get more eyes on the video and the channel is to tell the platform that this was a good one. And if you value the content I put out, please consider joining me on Patreon. For just about $1 per week, you help me continue to make this content for you, and are also entered to win race shoes and auto autograph memorabilia from your favorite riders. Up for grabs for the month of April is an autograph side plate from Cade Clayson's career best 10th place finish in Detroit this year. Thanks as always for watching Rotomoto. My name is Donnie. Keep it pinned to the weekend.